guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here i am anna and i'm a little bit spooky ignore my nails they're a mess i just polished them and i'm not good at polishing nails you know it's just kind of like let's just get it on <laughs> kind of thing today i wanted to do some monthly favor no they're not really monthly they're just kind of like when i feel like it favorites like i just i just film it whenever i feel like it basically and they just kind of go up whenever i get them edited <laughs> But this is some current favorites and things I've been liking lately. So as usual, let's go ahead and just start with makeup because that is my favorite subject. Let's start with like some complexion products. We'll kind of go from the order here. A product that I have really, really been loving. Ignore the washing machine in the background if you can hear that. Made that muffle the uh, sound of the washing machine a little bit. I seriously thought <laughs> the uh, cycle was done. My laundry room is literally right across the hall from me. So it kind of makes doing laundry hard and filming because you, you, you just kind of can't uh, make it comfortable. God, it's so hot today. It's so hot. Anyway, I actually don't have any like skincare to talk about this favorites video, <laughs> but I do have a complexion product. This, the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base. This is like a super duper, like amazing, poor filling, smoothing out, face tune in a jar primer. This is what I wanted the putty, elf putty primer to be. And it, this, however, this is like life-changing good. Girl, I, I don't have a pore. <laughs> I like, you can't clock a pore on this face right now. This stuff is amazing. I just take like the tiniest bit, like on my ring finger and smooth it out all over my face. Let it kind of push it into the pore, let it hang out. But it, it looks like this it is just a kind of lightly pink colored a putty type product, like a cream, but it has that very distinct silicone slip to it. I believe it's kind of considered a dupe of the Smooth Operator from Tarte, which is one that I've like been dying to try and just never got around to. And I saw like a handful of people lately talking about this one. And this thing has been on the market like 10 years. Like this is not a new product. Reviews that, or the people have heard mention it in videos. I was like, holy shit. How did, how is anyone talking about this? Why do I not know about this product? So the next time I was at Walgreens, I, I grabbed it, girl. I was like, let me try this out. And the first time I put it on, I was just blown away and have used it every single day since I got it. This is probably holy grail level <laughs> face primer. Um, Born to Glow from NYX. This is a naturally radiant foundation. Really, really love the finish in this. I do want to get it in a lighter shade because this shade is just a hair deep on me. And um, I have a full review. I will put in the cards or link or something. I don't know if I remember to do it. Let me know. Tell me in the comments to remember to do that stuff. Remind me because I'm not going to Beautiful finish, great foundation, has good wear time. Uh, it will get a tad oily on you after a long time. Like I didn't notice it in the mirror, but when I looked back at my footage later editing of my wear test, I was like, oh girl, you is a little oily, <laughs> a little oily. But yeah, it, it's a really nice product. I really like the finish of it. This is, I would say more of a dupe of the L'Oreal Pro Glow if you're looking for a cruelty-free option with a really nice shade range. Here you go. I was hoping to be a little bit more like the Vitalist from CoverGirl. It's not quite. There's something just magical about Vitalist that looks like Facetune as well. <laughs> like it just ugh, beautiful, but shade range is trash and I can't ever find a color that matches me in that one and I think it's discontinued. Anyway, so yeah, this one is beautiful product. I love the concealer. I think it was in my last monthly or my last favorites video. So yeah, good stuff. You can see my, go uh, watch my review if you want to see a wear test and like a deep dive into that product. Next is the e.l.f. Camo Concealer in the Radiant Finish. This is the shade Snow Rose, I think is what it's called. Fair Rose, sorry, Snow Rose. That's a, that's like a highlighter or something. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I really, really like this. This is a beautiful product. It's got the coverage, looks nice on the skin. It doesn't look overly drying. The shade is really, really good. Whereas my original one is, can almost pull a little bit too light on me. This one's just a little, like just, perfection. I like the finish of it. I like that slight radiance it has where it doesn't look oily or greasy and I don't feel like it breaks down or gets greasy or anything. Like the wear time on these is almost like exact. The shades are a little bit different. Uh, this does run a hair deeper than this one in the original, but they're both beautiful products, obviously. I think I use this one today actually because I just feel like uh, 
going full glam with the makeup. I've been using this one quite a bit since I got it. You know, a little tiny bit will do you. This is very Shape Tape-esque, but thinner, just a nicer formula, honestly. It just looks so much more flattering and dry skin friendly. So if you get a little bit of dryness under your eyes, but you need that coverage, this, this is a product to look into. And it does have also an incredible shade range. Yeah, I also have a full review and wear test coming up with this one. Or if it's not up already, I will keep you posted. Uh, either way, there's I do have a review and wear test using this one and show the same power. And I also have one of the original camo concealer. Uh, I'll have to link all these below because, I mean, I review a lot of complexion products, but yeah, this has been a fantastic concealer and definitely lives up to the hype and highly recommend. Uh, next is an eyeshadow palette. This is an oldie but a goodie. Well, it's like a year old now, I think. Naked Honey. I got my hands on this uh, about three months ago and I have used it almost nonstop since I got it. Like, this has become my everyday just go-to palette. and. It's all these colors I like. I like these very warm mustardy honey tones. These are like just my, my color story right here. And this palette is absolutely beautiful. The quality is stunning. I think Urban Decay really upped their game on this palette compared to like Naked Cherry and the other Naked palettes I have. I think this one is definitely a step up in formula. <laughs> like it, it's really good. And I always say Urban Decay is a very reliable formula. Like they are a trustworthy formula. To me, they never really let me down, but a lot of times they're not the most groundbreaking formulas at the same time. They're just steady. You know what you're getting. They don't try to, you know, reinvent the wheel with their formulas. And I think they did try improve something on this one because I don't know what it is about these shadows, but they perform like an absolute dream, like beyond your typical Urban Decay level, which to me, it's a fine eyeshadow formula. Like, it's not, you know, groundbreaking, but it's a great formula. It's one you can trust. But there's something about this one that just, damn. But yeah, more looks and some stuff are coming with this guy because I am absolutely in love and I know it's not the newest palette in the world or anything like that, but I don't care. <laughs> lip products, I have three lip products that I'm really, 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 really loving. First, I'm gonna talk about the Sheep Lip Kit from Milani and Salt and Pepper. This is that perfect 90s lip right here. You have a very brown lip liner and also beautiful formula. Love it so much. It's a retractable twist up. And then you have more of a chestnutty, rosy brown lipstick that goes with it. And oh my God, these are like holy grail status. The lipstick that and lip liner combo that I have been searching for. And I actually think I need a backup because I love it that much. It's such a universally flattering lip kit. That I think anybody could rock it and it look beautiful on them and look different on everyone. I'm just, I'm so in love with it. I want to use it every day. In fact, I've been kind of pairing these together quite a bit as well as these next two lip products that I want to talk about, which are the L'Oreal Matte Lip Crayons. I have this in the shade Smooth Caramel and Flirty Toffee. Like these three lips and this have just been my my everything lately. <laughs> Smooth Caramel is more of a caramelly, warm lip. A little bit more nude and very warm. Very like, not, I wouldn't say peachy. It's not pink enough to be a peach. It's, it's just very much a light caramel shade. And I just think it's absolutely stunning color. It's kind of been my everyday go-to lip color. And if I am wanting something with a little more kick to it, I have been going for Flirty Toffee, which is more of a, I wouldn't necessarily call it a toffee shade. It's more of a, a very red, rusty red tone, but you know I love a good rusty red lip and it, it's such a good color on me. I love it so much. And this formula, this formula on these is so absolutely bulletproof. Like it's not going anywhere. It lasts through meals, through wearing a face mask it doesn't budge like once it's on it is on but it's so comfortable it doesn't feel overly drying or anything like a liquid lipstick and i think the application it being in these little crayons is so easy it's just it's on and it is on for the entire day and oh one more makeup thing i do want to mention is the translucent powder from number seven i think in my last favorites i had the effect and protect protect and perfect foundation and the compact setting powder the lift and illuminate this is the perfect light loose setting powder this light diffusing powder blends evenly onto skin reflecting the light to smooth and disguise flaws with vitamin e Provitamin B5 to care for and condition skin hyaluronic acid to keep skin from keep skin hydrated. I'm not a fan of hyaluronic acid. I think I've talked about that, but regardless, I don't think it has any bearing on this 
product being that it's a powder. Uh, this is a, a beautiful powder. It doesn't darken my under eyes, which is really nice. It sets stuff down so beautifully and it really does make your skin look airbrushed and flawless. Like this is a good powder. Like. Laura Mercier who like this this is a beautiful setting powder the shade range is of course quite limited number seven needs to get that sorted out with their shit shade ranges on everything I think they do have some drops that come in a decent range but everything else is just really really not it I love that the packaging feels very high-end it feels like something you would buy at Sephora it's just an absolutely beautiful formula like my skin just looks whew, flawless it doesn't look heavy or cakey even if you over apply it it still doesn't look cakey but oh god i love it so much this is a fantastic powder uh it has quickly replaced my maybelline fit me loose setting powder it, it's just that good i have the shade translucent which actually has more of a a pinky undertone rather than the yellow undertone that a lot of translucent powders have to brighten and that works so much better on my skin tone i struggle so much with setting powders turning yellow under my eyes or darkening under my eyes this one doesn't do that and it also wears beautifully all over the face, under eyes, everywhere. And that is all for makeup. Let's move on to two nail products real quick uh, from Essie. I've really gotten into Essie lately, but I have their base coat, which I am really, really enjoying. This is a really good base coat. This is Strong Start Base Coat. I feel like my polish does last a long time. It doesn't chip or peel off too quickly. And as far as nail polishes go, I have really, really been loving this shade right here. On camera, this looks like an orange. It's not an orange. It's more of a, it's dustier than that. It's more of a mustardy, I don't know, like honey color. It's, yeah, it basically matches Naked Honey. This is a shade Catan, and I think this was in their spring collections. Or these are like new shades, anyways. Like I've done this on my nails for since I bought it. I don't know, like two months ago. My nails have been consistently this color. You probably see that in videos. Today's first day I've actually changed my nail polish, but I've been pairing this with black a lot. And like either an accent nail this color or an accent nail black, and the rest of them this color because I think they look pretty together. I don't know. I, there's something about this color. It's so rich and just kind of washed out at the same time that I, I just want to like roll around. Around in it. It's so pretty. I want to talk about a few lifestyle things, which I don't always include include in these videos, but I did get some new home stuff that I kind of want to mention. First two things would be two mugs from Starbucks that I have been absolutely loving. I don't know why I got so excited about these mugs and I'm still excited about them, even though I've had them for a little bit now. I, I'm still loving them. Insert picture here because I don't have them in here with me. I forgot to bring them in here. God, they're, they're beautiful <laughs> and they're just so nice and I, I, I love them. So I'm just including them just because of that. They're pretty mugs and I like them. Next would be getting an electric kettle. I got the bottom, 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 children bottom, children bottom. Them. but <laughs> it's an electric kettle from the brand bottom. They make like the French presses and everything. I had been boiling my water on the stove for my French press, which takes around 15 minutes to do, give or take how much water I put in there or whatever. It's heavy, you got to to it from the stove all the way to, you know, French press and, you know, you got, I got to leave my coffee nook to make coffee, which defeats the purpose of having a coffee nook. And if you saw my home video about the coffee nook, the, I like to keep all that shit over there and do my, my coffee, everything in that corner, not have to drag it out to another part of the kitchen. I picked up the electric kettle, I'll show you a picture on the screen here. This thing boils water in like 30 seconds. I didn't think that was like scientifically possible to get water that hot so fast that I can just turn it on. By the time I get my French press ready, the water is boiling. An amazing invention. And if you boil the water a lot, if you're a tea drinker or anything like that, get you a bottom, bottom, whatever electric kettle. They're really affordable too. I think this one was about $24, $25 maybe at Target. One of the best investments I ever made because I'm not invested in any more coffee pots. <laughs> and speaking of electric kettle, a French press. A friend gave me a French press and that has been so awesome because uh, I think I've mentioned before that I'm always on a journey to be able to be, to try to be my own barista at home and save money and not go to coffee shops so much. This is from CC's by the way. It's, I don't, I don't think this is a huge chain like nationwide. Uh, the coffee shops anyway. I don't know, community coffee may be available nationwide. At least it's available in the South. And um, this is their coffee shop. Uh, they're a Louisiana based company. So it's kind of local. <laughs> and what's funny is that I don't like community coffee at home. 
I am such a heretic when it comes to that. Like, sorry, Louisiana people, but I'm not a... I don't like community coffee at home, but I like the coffee from their coffee shop. You know what coffee I like? Pike's Place from Starbucks. That's what I buy. I, I don't... That's my favorite. I'm always trying different coffee brands as well and different roasts and all that. And, um... I mean, it's not that I hate community coffee. It's, I think it's just their dark roast that I don't like. There's some roasts that they have that I'm not a fan of, but that's the one, like, all my family members buy. And I'm like, Ugh. And it could also be that my dad just makes super weak coffee, and that might be why I don't like it. Because his coffee is basically just dirty water. He fusses about mine being too strong. But I want my coffee to basically be tar. <laughs> I like a good strong cup, and he's, like, the total opposite. He wants, like, the weakest coffee ever, and we... we we disagree about that. How do, why are we talking about that? I, I'm rambling. It's late at night. It's like the last video I'm filming of the day. It's super hot <laughs> outside. I'm just like, Ugh, I'm done. <laughs> okay, so next lifestyle, a milk frother. I also bought this from the Bottom Bottom Children of Bottom brand. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I'm just gonna call them Children of Bottom. Or children about them however see that's another one like i don't know ever how to say it i got the milk frother from that same brand that was a fantastic purchase i have my nice froth milk in my fancy coffee every morning now and i also oh i also use the french press to make cold brew i don't know if you're supposed to do it that way but that's not what i'm doing okay and it works milk frother was like eight dollars at target from the same brand yeah okay so that's all for like house stuff that i'm really into basically i'm just really into stuff that involves coffee a quick little fashion thing would be the two new pairs of jeans I got from Torrid. I'm so tickled with those, especially the black ones. I just, I love the way they look. I love every outfit that I have done with both pairs of jeans. So those are a little honorable mention in there is the Torrid high rise skinny jean. Let's see, lastly, let's talk about some media favorites. I haven't been watching anything on uh, Netflix and I, I don't know, I just got on there and was browsing just because I wanted a show to listen to. It had showed that Hannibal was on there and I was like, hmm, interesting. Let's check this out. That was one of the best series I have ever watched or one of my absolute favorites. Like that was such a good show. Like it's got twists and just bizarre storyline and crazy shit that you just get sucked in and you really get involved with the characters. And I was just, I loved that show. I thought it was so good. Mads Mikkelsen is amazing in that. I thoroughly enjoyed that and like didn't want it to end. Like, it was one of those shows where I just was like, oh, it's over. Now what am I going to do with my life? It was that feeling. And it took me a, a few weeks to find something new to get into since then. And uh, I noticed they added season two of Good Girls. Good Girls is a fantastic show as well. If you like Breaking Bad and stuff like that, this is a little bit more of a lighter version of Breaking Bad. Like, it's not nearly as violent and graphic. It's got some funny in there. I really enjoyed it. I loved the whole cast. <laughs> the kind of the bad guy in it, uh, Rio in the show. I don't think I ever know his name in the show. Hmm. His, his real name is Manny Montoya, Montana. Yeah, Manny Montana. Oh my God, that man is so handsome. <laughs> it is a really good cast, a really good show. And you get so sucked in because you're just like, oh, come on, you know, what else can happen type of thing. Like it's almost, a hair frustrating but it's incredibly entertaining and I just think the cast is really good. The story is, is really a little bit predictable but good and it's just something really fun to watch and I love seeing these three women together. They they play off each other very well. They have a really good on-screen chemistry and it's just a really good show and I, I totally enjoy it and I would recommend it to anybody that's just wanting something that's a little less heavy but still got some drama in there but also will make you smile. Good Girls is definitely one to check out. Anyways, that is all my favorites for uh, this portion of time. <laughs> I don't know, right now. Let me know some of your favorites right now in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Stay spooky and stay safe. Bye now.